welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, and uh, today I don't know what the project's going to be. I hadn't figured on it yet. I got to the mood to do the intro for a video, and then we'll work out what it's going to be about. I don't have any idea right now, but I was I got an email from a buddy this morning, <clears throat> and he had included the Yahoo new Yahoo email user agreement. And he wanted to know from me, he said, just why in the heck does Yahoo need to get permission to read my emails? Why do they need to read my emails? And uh, I told him, I guess it's so they could bug him to death with, uh, you know, ads for junk. And maybe, maybe pass it on to their buddies in law enforcement if they thought he was up to something. Uh, the, I forgot to mention the important part of the, the notice he had attached onto his email there. And it says that, uh, that they're going to operate their, uh, their email and such things by the laws of New York. Well, that should be interesting because, you know, Canada's got this law that says if you use the wrong gender pronoun with somebody or hurt somebody's feelings, you've got to go to jail. England's got, you know, Britain, Great Britain's got that law, and they got a poor old boy there, one of those British rednecks. They got him in jail for a poor joke, got a year for it. So, you know, this is kind of a serious thing. But I don't think New York, now I'm not a lawyer, mind you, but I think New York can't make their law stick because if they try to tell you what you can or can't say, that's depriving you of your First Amendment rights. So I'm, I'm interested in seeing, you know, the first time they try to find somebody, New York tries to find somebody or arrest somebody, say some Texas boy or Arkansas boy, maybe they said something racially uh, improper or sexually improper or something in their email about somebody. I'm wondering just what will happen when they try and arrest us, because I don't, I don't think they can bring it off, you know, I think they're getting too big for their britches. But, that should be interesting. Big Brother is definitely setting up all his infrastructure. And I told him, don't worry about Yahoo so much as the, you know, the National Security Agency. They already archive all your emails and text messages and who you call on the phone and whatever. So, you know, you don't have any privacy, actually, unless you just whisper in somebody's ear. And if they're a big mouth, you, <laughs> you ain't got any privacy there either. Uh, so I just, you know, thought I'd bring that up. There was something else that I had on my mind. And, oh, yeah, I was watching uh, Rob down there in Australia. He's got the Zenudu channel. Uh, he was talking about uh, somebody had pushed a, the dislike button, you know, thumbs down on his video in the first five or ten minutes of it. And... Uh, and I, I told him, I said, well, you know, I, I don't even look at that stuff, whether they, somebody's pushed a thumbs up or a thumbs down. In fact, it's been a while since I even mentioned anybody punching one of them, probably a couple months anyway or more. But I never think to look at that, and the reason is, if I see a thumbs down on my video, I still don't know what the heck it's about, you know. It, did the person not like... Uh, the intro, or did they not? Did I say something in the, you know, in the introduction that they didn't like, or was it something in the project they didn't like, or maybe they didn't like the joke at the end, provided there was one. So I mean, just punching the thumbs down doesn't tell me what you liked about the video any more than punching the thumbs up tells me what you liked to, did like about it. You know. So if if you got it in mind to punch the thumbs down and you want it to make any real difference you got to put in the comments well, why you put the thumbs down and and then maybe I'm not saying I will but I might change that part of uh, how I do things in the future and then again I might not I know no guarantees there but it'd be interesting to know why you did it as it is I don't know what you know somebody punched the thumbs down big deal I don't know why I know Mr. Pete gets upset about that sort of thing but me, I couldn't care less. Of course, maybe that's why I don't have as many subscribers, Mr. Pete, or one of the reasons. <laughs> all right, while I'm figuring on what to do about this video, y'all digest all the baloney I've told you here, and uh, I'm just going to put you to sleep until I figure out what I'm doing.
Last, I've been to an auction and I got a whole sack full of grill bits here. Uh, drill bits, I mean uh, <laughs> taps. I got a lot more than this too, but this is the, the biggest collection of taps in one bag. I got this pile of taps also and some other stuff, some stuff called car reamers. Got several of those. So I don't need <laughs> all that many of these size taps, but I got them, you know. So I think I'm going to try to eBay the little boogers. We'll see what happens. Uh, I decided on what I'm going to do here. I'm going to get started making the gears. I can't make but about 10% of the gears that I've got on my list right this minute because i got to get some bigger stock. I need some 3.5 inch and 3 inch and you know maybe some 2.5 inch and I've got 2 inch and I may have some 2.5 inch so I can make maybe maybe 2 or 3 of the, of the uh, gears before I go back to the metal supermarket and try to buy some bigger stuff. They always look at me, how much do you want on just a foot? And I can see they're not really happy cutting a foot off a great big piece, but hey, what can I say? I don't need a lot more. That's sticking out of the chuck a long ways. So probably I need to dig out my rest, which I very rarely ever use. But first I'm going to put a center in it. I used the, uh, the double loose roller tool there <clears throat> to line that thing up where it was straight. So I'm going to put a center in it and then I'll probably try to make a nice slick spot on it there for the for my steady rest to run on. Ah oh man, there's always something, huh? Right? There you go. That's part of making stuff. You got to use the tools you bought. After all, I bought them for something, right? The first gear needs to be one and five eighths inches. So I'm going to cut down yeah, in the neighborhood uh, the inch and three quarter here. Then I'll take a party tool and put a little groove in it and then cut it off on the bandsaw. And then I can chuck it up in, uh, say, my four jaw chuck and cut the inside. And then I can put it on my mandrel and cut all the outside parts of it. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do. I'm not certainly not going to try and part it off here hanging out like this though. But, I can make some A-bomb type cuts on this, it being aluminum. And me running it kind of slow. Well, A-bomb to a small weight. How's that? Maybe A-bomb's little brother. Not much to see here though. I'm just keep cutting till I'm down to about 1.7, something like that. I got her down to about 1.75 diameter. And then I made a pretty good little cut there with uh, the parting tool. So I can take it over on the bandsaw now and it ought, to, it ought to cut really nice because it doesn't have very far to go and it can't get very much out of line in that short distance. Uh, a viewer commented on me using the three jaw chuck a whole lot here lately and the reason that is is it's fast and easy and I don't I don't use it for something that I'm going to have to take out of the chuck and turn it around and have it set up accurate now if I, if I was going to do that you know I would get the four jaw chuck because that's the only way you can work really accurate this thing has got three thousandths off center which will give you six thousandths total indicator runout. So I've made this piece a lot larger than the inch and five eighths I need. It's about an inch and three quarter. And I'll put the hole in it that'll fit the mandrel. And then I'll put it on the mandrel and square up the sides and take it to the right diameter and all that sort of thing. So it's not going to be back in this chuck after I square off, cut that extra piece of metal off the end there and bore the hole in it, you know. And all I'm going to do to bore the hole is I'm going to come in with drill bits till I get up, you know, about 5 eighths. And then I'll get a boring bar and take it the rest of the way to about uh, 0.74. 
I think it'll slip on the mandrel at 0.74. If not, I'll warm it up a little. I got a three-quarter inch mandrel. No, no point in getting it too big because it gets sloppy and loose on it. I have no idea of what size I said I was going to bore this hole to. I'm going one thousand below a half, below three quarters of an inch. So that should be 0.749, at least in my book. Well, I missed it just a little bit. I showed it be two tenths under three quarters of an inch. But the mandrel starts there. And so I'm just going to warm it up and uh, warm up my gear blank and just ease it up on the mandrel. It should go about halfway up if I warm it up a little bit. This thing's plus two thousandths on that end, so I could get it up maybe to here, which should be good enough. We'll see what happens. I baked the gear blank at uh, about 250 degrees for about 15 minutes. So there we go. Slipped right in. I think that's probably a good enough location for it there. I'll have the tail stuck with the, the rotary table on this end and my dog on that end. That should work out just right. There we are. All right, I think it's time to knock off for the day and continue this tomorrow. Well, that's all folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.